Metal Gear Solid easily features one of the most convoluted plot lines in video games. However, from a pure gameplay perspective, it's arguably one of the best series that has tried to iterate its mechanics for each of its new entries. In this feature, we're going to take a look at the best canon games in the Metal Gear franchise. Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes Let's face it, Metal Gear Solid V Ground Zeroes was little more than a glorified demo. While it was released as a full standalone experience, it's short enough that speedrunners have finished it in around five minutes. Clocking in at an average hour's worth of gameplay, the single mission felt wholly underdeveloped and unworthy of its original price tag. Even looking past the fact that Konami sold a single mission demo for half the price of a full game, there was nothing significant in Ground Zeroes beyond some narrative threads tying together the PSP entry, Peace Walker, and the series' alleged final installment, The Phantom Pain. Ultimately, Ground Zeroes was essentially a proof of concept, showcasing the new ways the franchise had evolved and how players would be tackling missions in the modern era. There was nothing offensively bad about the way that the mission functioned, but the brevity of this prologue experience left a bad taste in many gamers' mouths, and left it feeling less essential than Konami wanted us to believe. Metal Gear 1987 saw the release of the first game in the Metal Gear franchise on the MSX, but due to its lack of traction in America, Konami reworked the game for the NES in 1988. A complete remix of the game's location changed the game quite a lot, creating a lot of broken mechanics and fundamentally altering the balance of the experience. Even radio communications within the game offered outdated clues that were no longer helpful due to the changes made to the structure of the game. Series creator Hideo Kojima had expressed that Metal Gear for the NES is his least favorite game in the entirety of the franchise. Considering how much the developers ruined his original vision for the game when remixing the MSX version, it's easy to see why he despises it so strongly. Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops Portable Ops as a canon entry in the saga is a bit disputable. Although Kojima doesn't include this game in the Metal Gear saga, we decided to include it because it does tie up some loose ends here and there. As a direct sequel to Snake Eater, the PSP-exclusive Portable Ops picks up six years later in South America and continues the story of Big Boss and his creation of Outer Heaven. The game dropped the survival gameplay elements from Snake Eater, but retained much of what makes a Metal Gear Solid game, while comfortably translating it to a portable experience. Quick, short missions kept things simple for on-the-go play, and its narrative was brilliantly assisted by gorgeous hand-drawn comic panels. Despite being a solid entry in the franchise, Portable Ops was brought down by some fundamental control problems. The lack of a right stick on the cramped PSP created frustrating camera movement. This made the game feel clunky compared to its console cousins, and although it birthed some new features that would go on to become mainstays in the series, its vision was slightly hampered by the constraints of its hardware. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker Portable Ops will always be remembered for being the first action-focused Metal Gear game for the PSP, but Peace Walker will be forever commended for taking things to the next level. It adopted mechanics from its PS3 cousin, Guns of the Patriots, such as searching guards and using over-the-shoulder aiming. The Fulton recovery system allowed players to subdue enemies to recruit, replacing Portable Ops' recruitment truck. Peace Walker was the perfect evolution of a portable Metal Gear experience, improving on the camera issues in Portable Ops and offering a better narrative that was mostly doled out in optional audio form. Despite its many improvements, its portable nature still kept the game from being as engrossing as a console entry. Even though it went on to sell over 230,000 copies, it simply didn't have the reach needed to propel it into the same success of the numbered games in the franchise. Metal Gear 2 – Solid Snake Noted as being one of the most complex games of its era, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake took everything that worked about the original MSX game and expanded on it exponentially. A vastly improved narrative structure complemented a suite of new additions to gameplay. Perhaps most noteworthy is Solid Snake's ability to crawl, a simple feature that has played a significant part in the stealth aspects of every major game since. Much like the original game, Metal Gear 2 is often forgotten in conversations about the series in favor 
favor of the more modern entries, but its focus on improving existing mechanics and offering new ways to play set a precedent for the series and helped shape its future, laying the groundwork for its eventual move to the 3D space in Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid 4 – Guns of the Patriots Guns of the Patriots' delayed release lacked many of its promised features and was seen as a shell of what it could have been. Luckily, what it actually was still ended up being quite a damn good time, though it suffered from possibly the most convoluted and ridiculous storyline. In a series already known for outlandish storytelling, it still managed to garner universal acclaim from critics and consumers alike, introducing modern over-the-shoulder shooting and free-form gameplay that allowed a bit more options for tackling missions. The game really resonated with players looking for an update to the series' norms. Its set-piece moments and phenomenal score created a lasting impression that many will remember as high points in the series for years to come. Metal Gear Solid 2 – Sons of Liberty Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty is often cited as being the game that introduced most players to the Metal Gear franchise. Releasing on the PS2 in 2001, it served as a perfect sixth generation experience with its fantastic graphics, substantially improved focus on compelling storytelling and world building. Unlike previous games in the series, enemies worked in squads and used flanking maneuvers to create more tense experiences, and the improvement to cover mechanics introduced hallmark genre features like cover based shooting. Regardless of how some players bemoaned the introduction of Raiden as a playable character, Sons of Liberty will always go down as one of gaming's most influential games. Metal Gear Solid 5 – The Phantom Pain Releasing in 2015, over a year after its prologue, Ground Zeroes, The Phantom Pain was a fitting end even if some felt it left some threads open to interpretation. Moving the series into truly modern times, it adopted the typical quest-based sandbox gameplay of today's open-world games. Breathtaking graphics, interesting missions, and the move to fully open-world design elevated the game to Game of the Year status for many publications, and although it came with controversy over voice actor changes and the demise of Kojima and Konami's working relationship, it still stands to this day as the most feature-packed and expansive entry in the Metal Gear series, and functions as the perfect bookend for the franchise. Metal Gear Solid Metal Gear Solid was one of the original PlayStation's most ambitious games and established the fundamentals in which all stealth games have been built upon since. With above-average CGI and voice acting quality that was far beyond anything we'd experienced at that time, it set new standards for interactive storytelling. With the move from 2D to 3D, Snake could now enter first-person mode and move about the game's locations with more freedom and expression. It featured one of the franchise's most beloved boss fights against Psycho Mantis, and introduced gamers everywhere to the iconic cardboard box that helped Snake slink around the brilliantly designed levels. It wasn't a perfect game, but this PlayStation classic set the tone for the series we all know and love today. Metal Gear Solid 3 – Snake Eater Seen as one of the more narratively grounded Metal Gear games, Snake Eater was also a prequel to every other game in the franchise. This made it the best point of entry for new players from a story standpoint, but it also introduced a massive improvement to its core gameplay, with an emphasis on survival mechanics like hunting and eating, limb-specific injury and treatment, and an extremely detailed camouflage system. This new focus on simulation made the game an immersive masterpiece that required players to invest invest entirely or not at all. The addition of detailed hand-to-hand -hand combat and the stamina gauge added new layers to gameplay that further expanded on the groundwork laid in previous installments, and allowed the game to become one of the most detailed and option-filled games available on any platform. While later games in the series further added to the franchise's gameplay mechanics, Snake Eater will always be remembered as the game that paved the way for everything that made those games great, and because of its compelling narrative drama and un 
unrelenting attention to detail that pushed stealth gaming to a whole new level, it's easily one of the best examples of franchise evolution in the history of gaming. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, please hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to switch on the notifications bell icon next to it. That way you'll never miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching.